Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this video is part 3.5 in my beginner tea tinker series. So why is it 3.5? Well, it's a small addition to the previous video in which we talked about the different geometry managers or layout managers in tea tinker So we talked about pack, place and grid, which are different ways that you can position and organize your widgets on the screen. Now, in the, in the case of grid, we said that when you organize your stuff in a grid, as you can see right here, so you can see that we have two columns and four rows, so it's similar to a table, like a 2D table. Well, in the case of grid, if you resize it, it's not responsive. So your stuff will remain in sort of the top left corner of the screen and it will not expand or it will not be centered in the screen as you resize your window. So you can see even if we resize it like this or like that, you can see it's not responsive. So in this video, I'm going to show you two different ways in, you, in which you can make your grid responsive and make it respond to the resizing of the window. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. So the first method I'm going to show you is as follows. I'm just going to add these few lines of code. And actually for now, I'm going to comment them out and just use them for reference. And I'm going to show you step by step how this works. All right, so we have this line of code right here. So this is what we will be using to make our grid responsive. So this is something called grid underscore row configure. And we have a very similar one, which is grid underscore column configure, as you can see right here. But we'll get to that in a minute. So what does grid row configure do? Well, I'm just going to change this I into a zero, and then I'm going to explain to you what is going on here. So you can see there's a number and there's a weight. So it doesn't really make a ton of sense. Well, this number refers to the index of the row. So in our case, we're talking about rows, so we're configuring the rows. Let's not think about the columns. So for now, just ignore the columns. So for row zero, here I'm saying for row zero, assign a weight equal one. Now, what is the weight? The weight essentially is you telling Tkinter where to place any additional spacing within the grid. So as you resize, there will be additional spaces. Here, I'm telling it place the additional spaces in row zero. So now if I run my code, okay, sorry about that. If I run my code, so when we first launch it, it looks the exact same, nothing is different. However, as I resize this way, also nothing changes. Why? Because we didn't modify the columns. So we didn't configure the columns. However, if I resize down there, or if I resize the entire window, you can see that the row zero, which is the first row, takes up the most amount of space. So any additional space found in the rows, so found when you expand vertically, this will be added to row zero because its weight is one. Now, what does weight one really mean? Well, the thing is, by default, all your rows have a weight of zero and weight is sort of proportional to each other. So I can assign a weight of five to this guy and I'm going to do it actually and run it again. OK, let me stop. Run. OK, so I assign a weight of five, but you can see the output is the exact same. This is because the weight is relative. So if these guys are zero and this is five, then these guys will not take any additional space and this one will take the most amount of space. So in this case, there is no difference. However, I may go ahead and assign a weight of two to the row number one. So if I just come here and I change this to one and make the weight to be two. So now if I run it and I just increase the size, you can see that this one took a lot of space and this one took a significant amount of space as well, but just not as much as the first one. So again, this is super relative. Now the one with the highest weight will take up the most amount of space. If they all have equivalent weight, they will all take up the exact same amount of space. So now if I change both of them to five, sorry, five, and I run the code and I increase it, you can see that they take somewhat equal amount of space. So this is definitely equal. Now you might think that this one is taking more, but actually they are centered in their relative spacing. So this is sort of divided here. So you can see that this part is for this one and then this part is for this one as well. So they are definitely equal. Okay, so now um, let's just keep it simple and change everything to be a weight of one. And let's do it for all of the rows. So we have four different rows, right? So now I'm going to paste this and I'm just going to change this one to be two and then this one to be three, because like I said, we're changing this for all four rows. So we have row zero, row one, row two, and row three. So now if I run it 
and I resize, you can see we are taking up exact amount of space, so it's equal amount of space between all of them. And this is the intended purpose in this case. Now I can do the same for columns because as you can see, they're staying sort of in the same column zone. They're not expanding column wise. So the way I do it is simply using the column configure function, which is very similar to row configure. You also have to assign weights. So, okay, here I just noticed that, my bad, I have, um, these should all be the same weight. Okay, let me just run it again to avoid confusion. And there you go. So now you can see that they are definitely equal in weight. So let's configure the columns. So we have two columns in this case, only two. So we have column zero and column one, and they will also both have the weight one. So now if I run this and I resize, you can see that everything is spaced out equally in both the rows and the columns. So everything is super centered. And this is the goal. This is what we are trying to achieve by making our grid responsive. Now you may tell me, this doesn't look very good. And I have to agree with you. Why is that? This is because it's there's so much blank space and it sort of feels very weird when I'm filling out a form and I have to type my price per item and my number of items and it's just so far away from each other. I don't really feel that it makes sense. However, I don't want the initial way of having everything sort of stuck in the top left corner. What option do we have here? Well, now I present to you the second way. So the second way is we're going to use a frame so that we keep everything tightly knit together in one place, but resize the screen by centering, keeping everything centered. And I'm going to show you what I mean right now. So this is the code that we just did so that we can configure everything. Actually, before I get to that, I kind of forgot we had the code right here. So this code actually performs the exact same thing as the code that you can see above. The only difference is I'm doing it in a for loop. Why is that? Well, to avoid copy pasting too many times and changing all of the indexes and maybe messing up the way I messed up earlier in the video, you can just create a for loop. So we have four rows and two columns. So you save those numbers, you create this loop. So for example, for I in range rows, so I will go from zero, one, two, and three. And then you will just configure the row for this I, so for zero, for one, for two, and three, and then you will assign the weight one. And the same thing goes for columns. So it's the exact same logic. Now I can just like erase this, run it again, just to show you that there's no difference. And there you go. So you can use either way. Obviously, if you have so many widgets and you have like a grid that's like a 10 by 10 or maybe a 20 by 10, then yeah, I get it. You have to use a for loop. It's way faster, way easier than using a copy paste and writing everything like all over again. Okay, so method number two, we are going to introduce something called a frame. So how do you introduce a frame? Well, a frame simply looks like this. So you will just say frame equals tkinter dot frame. So what is a frame? Think of it as a container. So for example, we have a very large container which contains all our widgets. So as of now, we have a window. It's the largest container and inside it is a grid of all the widgets. What I'm trying to do here is inside the window, I will first place a frame. So this frame will be like a second container inside the larger container. Then inside the frame itself, I am going to place all the widgets and organize them in a grid. So how do I do so? Simply by assigning the parent to be frame itself. So here I just said frame is equal to tkinter.frame and actually the parent for frame will be window. All right, so next what I do is I will say the parent for the label and the entries and everything else will be frame. So I will just change this, change this one as well. Um, this one, change this one. And I have to do this for all seven of the widgets, so it's a bit annoying for now, but we're almost there. Okay, and this is the final one. So I just change the parent to be frame. So again, what am I doing here? I'm assigning all my widgets, placing them inside the frame, and then placing the frame itself inside the window. So we talked a bit about the hierarchy in the first video of the series when we explained widgets and sort of the root window and how things work in tkinter. All right, so now if I run it, let's see, we're not going to see any output. Why is that? This is because I placed everything inside the frame. However, I didn't really place the frame in the window. What do we mean by this? Well, we know in tkinter, there are always two steps, two steps to add any widget to your screen. First, you create it like this. So like the way we do tkinter.label. And second, you have to use place or grid or pack to actually add it to your screen. So I'm just going to say frame 
dot pack and I'm going to explain why we use pack and not grid in a second. But let me run and show you the output. So now same output as usual, but now if I come here and I resize it, you can see that it stays centered in the top center of the screen. Now I can resize it to the maximum and it remains in the top center. So here you have another method. Maybe to you this looks better than the first case. Maybe this is what you want. Or maybe when you're developing your app, you want the, what we had in the first case. So this is up to you. My responsibility is to show you both ways you can make this responsive and resizable. But which one you choose is up to you. All right. So now this is what we did. Now, how did this work? Well, we placed everything. We placed our grid inside the frame. So the frame is a container. But then the container itself, how did we place it on the screen? We used pack. Pack by default is responsive. It will keep everything inside blocks and then these blocks will be centered and spaced out according to the available space on the screen. So this is a very good option that you can use if you want to keep your stuff tightly knit together and then just when you resize you just introduce extra space. Now of course you can add extra spacing here, you can space the stuff out initially, but essentially what we're doing here when you add this frame you're keeping everything in the same position that it was when you had the screen to be smaller so that's really it for this video i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found it useful do let me know which one of the two methods you are more interested in and yeah i'll see you in the next one bye bye